And welcome back to News Centre. Thank you very much for joining us and staying with us. We have about half an hour to go, but we still have a lot of good content for you. And uh, of course, we're following up on all the top stories we've been focusing on since the uh, sh the show started. Uh, but for now, though, I want to uh, bring you up to speed with uh, a story that really uh, caught the hearts of many Kenyans and a man is on the run after he killed his wife and three children in Maruri area, Kiambu County, early on Monday. Neighbours say the four may have been strangled to death. Our reporter Caroline B with the details of this disturbing story. The details of the crime and the motive behind the killings remain unclear. Marurui villagers woke up to the crime scene after one female resident went to inquire why the eldest child in the family had not yet gone to school. The youngest child, thought to be three years old, opened the door and innocently responded, Mom is still sleeping. <laughs> Dakika hii kuisha, huyo mama akakuja kanita, mama Shane, mama Shane. Unajua mama Maria amekufa ame, ame na watoto wake. Mama huyo ambaye ndiye tunaweza sema bibi wa mwenye kuawa kama mwenye kuawa, alikuwa amelala kwa kitanda yake ni kama mkono umefunjwa upade wa nyuma. Uh, halafu msichana moja ambaye alikuwa miaka karibu 14 kwa sababu wako class 8 naye alikuwa amelala chini akiwa pia naye mkono wake ni kama umefungwa huko nyuma, alikuwa amejifunika na blanket. Halafu hawa watoto wawili kama msichana kamoja bako kako kila darasa la nane uh, kalikuwa upade ule wa kitada, upade wa juna, haka kijana, upade wa chini bako kalikuwa na kama miaka nane hivi kwa sababu kako class two. The relationship between the man and the woman only identified as Mama Mary remains vague. According to neighbors and relatives, the two were in an informal marriage, but the husband was distant and was rarely seen. Not even his name is known to the residents. Those who knew Mama Mary said she did manual jobs, including working in a pub in the area. The children aged 13, 8 and 5 years who fell victim of the killings are said to be from a previous marriage. Only the youngest child who survived the attack belonged to the attacker. Bwana yake ako wapi atupatie the whole information apatikani unaona of course yeye ndiye angefaa kutuambia what is going on here si eti sisi tukuje kuanza kuulizwa vitu hatujui huyo mama ni mtoto wa yatima huku ni kwa baba yake nikupatiwa amepatiwa makao na baba yake kwa hivyo hakuna mahali alikuwa ameolewa kwa sababu angekuwa ameolewa angekuwa kwa kwa, kwa kina bwana yake huku ni kwao police have asked members of the public to front any known details of the alleged murderer and his whereabouts caroline b ktn news hmm. Quite a disturbing story indeed. And I want us to cross over to my colleague, uh, George Maringa, who's joining us from Meru, just to hear the sentiments of uh, the residents there. Uh, George, over to you. Good morning, Betty. Indeed, uh, the issue of domestic violence is one that has continued to raise mixed reactions from people, uh, you know, especially here in Meru. They bear mixed reactions talking to them earlier. And, uh, you know, it is uh, the, the, here in Meru County, we have witnessed some people, you know, uh, facing that uh, issue. And uh, I'll just engage them to just tell us and to give us a perspective of what they think about this issue. Asante sana kwa kungana nasi kwenye KTN News. Tuambia jina lako. Uh, mimi naitwa Osman Yasin na mimi ni mkazi wa Meru hapa. Aha. Hii issue ya domestic violence unaiona vipi? Ni jambo linalofaa kufanyika ama maoni yako ni yapi kuhusu domestic violence? Eh, domestic violence imekuwa ni kama culture yetu wa Afrika kwa sababu unajua maisha ambayo tunaishi leo ni maisha ya shida, maisha ya dhiki na maisha ya mapato maduni. Hivi ndivyo sababu unaona maisha mengi yamekuwa na tabu na matatizo mengi sana. Leo maisha tunayokuwa naye inafaa tuwe tunafanya kitu kwa inaitwa heshima kati ya wanawake na wanaume lakini ukiangalia rika ambayo imekuja kwa hivi sasa wanawake wetu hawatupatii wa heshima na sisi wanaume pia wengi wetu na sisi pia tuwapatie heshima kwa sababu ya nini watu wametoka katika ile mipango ya Mungu watu wamefata mipango ya dunia watu wamependa wame pesa wamemsahau Mungu hii ndio matatizo unakuta kila nyumba katika familia ina matatizo yake yale matatizo mengi na vita vingi vinafanyika katika familia nyingi huwa ziripotiwi lakini ukiingia mashinani mashinani huku reserve reserve utakuta kuna balaa nyingi na taabu nyingi na vita vingi sana ambavyo huwa viripotiwi mm -hmm. sasa matatizo kama hayo ni mengi na ni yamekuwa ni kawaida katika kwa hivyo unamaanisha kwamba iwapo mtu atakosema iwapo mtu atakosana na mke wake ama mume wake vita ndio suluhu eh, unajua 
unajua saa sa zingine itabidi itabidi umpigane kwa sababu ikiwa umepandwa na tempa unajua si wengi wanaweza kuzuia ile tempa yao unajua kile kitu unaweza rushiwa mdomo unajua kina mama wetu sengine wanakuaga na midomo anaweza kukurushia mdomo unasikia umekuwa mkali sana sasa hata utakuta umepigana tayari si kupenda kwako kupigana lakini yale maneno unaweza rushiwa yanaweza kukugusa mahali ambapo unasikia uchungu umekupanda sasa unakuta uwezi kuweza kujizuia lazima ufanye jambo ndio usikie umetulia roho yako. Uh, asante sana maoni yako huyu asante sana Rashid. Uh, uh, Nitazungumza na mwanamke mmoja kwa tuambie jina lako. Kwa majina mimi naitwa Generosa Kasheri. Wewe uh, ni mkazi wa hapa Meru. Mimi nafanya kazi hapa Meru ama business rende. Uh, yes. There is the issue of domestic violence in which um, you know women have found themselves on the receiving end. You know wanachapo wengine wanaumizwa kuna wengine wao labda pia wanakufa. Maoni yako ni yapi? Ni kweli tunaumizwa wanaume wetu wengine wanaleta wakienda walewe wanakuja wanapigana kwa manyumba mm -hmm. na ile mbaya kabisa unajua wanaume wetu ni wengine wana, wakiwa wamesaa kunywa wanakuja wanakupigana huko wana hata wana hesima kabisa na sisi sasa tunajaribu kuwaleta karibu lakini wataki sababu huko wanaenda wanakunywa wanakukuta wanawake wengine wanaona hao ndiye best kuliko sisi hiyo ndi imetufanya tu Unaona ma, kuna kuwa na vita kwa nyumba. Swali la misho, suluhu inafaa kuwa gani? Suluhu inataka wanaume wetu tupendane, tuende kwa kanisa, tukae pamoja. Yes, na tukio tuna, na wape watoto wetu uesima. Unajua uh -huh. hata watoto wape uesima. Uh -huh. Yes, hiyo uh -huh. ndi shinda hile tukonayo kubwa. Santi sana generosa. Beti, those are just some of the questions in Meru uh, regarding this issue and I'll hand back to you in studio. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Judge Maringa. Uh, of course, sampling the views of the residents there in Meru County. Coming back to you, Daktari. Uh, okay, a lot has been said there, but uh, what, how do we draw the line between mental health and outright violence, you know, that, that can be meted on family members, like the story that we aired before that? Um, there's something very um, significant that the gentleman said, mm -hmm. amongst many other things. Yeah. He said, we don't have a choice. When we are provoked, we don't have a choice. So that's someone, and that's the mentality where people feel that it's A or B. Mm -hmm. Yet if you had good mental health, you'd be able to work through your emotions and... Um, come up with solutions that n need not be physical, need not be violent. Mm -hmm. But because we've got to the point where so many people are unhealthy, mm -hmm. it has become the norm and it has become customary and cultural. Mm -hmm. Yet, if we, right now, if we had a boy and a girl, we would tell them, don't fight, don't be rude, don't talk back. Yeah. We teach them all those things. But if we get to the point where now we make it, it's allowable, it's acceptable, not to go through all those stages, just react. Yeah. And that's what he said. They talk, he's, he's, he's said the ladies talk back at us and you need to do something to get it yeah. out of you. Yeah. So you see, that is, that is a state of not being mentally healthy. Mm. You so might, how do I know if I'm mentally healthy? How do you know if you're mentally healthy? Mm -hmm. I'm all about prevention. Mm -hmm. Take steps to be proactive, mm -hmm. be proactive. If someone is unfit, you wouldn't say, how do I know I'm unfit? Mm. You'd be walking upstairs and you're tired, you're, 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 you're more exhausted at the end of the day, mm. you have all these things. Yet people who, are, who take steps, who are proactive about their health, they eat right, they exercise, they, 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 they're not very sedentary, they take all these steps, mm -hmm. they are healthy. Mm. Just the same with, mm -hmm. with human beings. But isn't mental health a bit more complicated? Because how do, if I am operating, to myself, I'm operating, you know, normally. How will I know that, you know, there probably there's an issue that I need to deal with? Are there signs, um, even from family members who would know, like, okay, Betty's acting a bit like this. Yes. Could there be a problem? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's um, the, the answer to your question would be in two stages. Mm -hmm. One is the acute one, where your family members will note your changes in your mood, mm -hmm. changes in how you react to things, sleeping pattern, eating activity level, mm -hmm. level of motivation, concentration, mm -hmm. all this is part of your mental health. Mm -hmm. How you react to situations, right. if any of those changes, and people who, if you, if you have those close family relations mm -hmm. and cl close social relations, mm -hmm. they'd be able to notice there's a change. But on the other hand, 
if we learn from the beginning how to take good steps, how to um, get out that we have a problem, how to deal with a problem, mm -hmm. how to um, react to situations. Mm -hmm. If we had this background, then we wouldn't be getting to the point where someone goes down, 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 down. Yeah. Because the person, a healthy person will have social relationships. Such that these social relationships could be the ones who will say there's something that is different. Yeah. But if a person, if there are people who don't have those close social relationships. Mm -hmm. You hear neighbors saying, for the, the story earlier, yes, yes. we don't know much about that yeah. lady. Yeah. We just know she used to work as a casual laborer. Mm. Why? Mm. Why are we putting ourselves in situations where people don't know much about us? Mm -hmm. We live in a community and we're not creating those social relationships. Mm -hmm. Yet, there are other people who one day or you're late for by, by two hours, someone will be like, no, no, something is, something is something amiss. Is wrong, yeah. That's because that person is healthy. Okay. They created social relationships right. that can monitor them, that can help keep them in the mm. flow. All right. I also want us to talk about the stigma. During the break, you know, we're talking about mental health. As we wind up, um, you know, the stigma just surrounding mental health. And, you know, if maybe, you know, you suffer from depression or you um, maybe have bipolar, you know, you look at it like, okay, she's a bit, she's off. Mm. You know, do you think we're making steps in actually making this a normal conversation that, you know, okay, so you have this issue, but there's a solution to it? We are. We are, mm. uh, we are taking steps. Because even having this conversation, yeah. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we wouldn't be having mm -hmm. this conversation. So we are taking steps. We're just not taking enough steps. Okay. The one thing that I want everyone to know is mental health is just health. If you think about it now, like mm -hmm. breaking your leg. Yes, yes. Or um, getting the flu mm -hmm. or having a toothache. If you think about your mental health in the same context, mm -hmm. it becomes much easier to understand mental health and mental illness is an illness. All right. Yes. So many times, and I'm sure even working within this environment, mm -hmm. this standard group, yes. if let's say there are, what, a thousand staff, mm -hmm. if I take a poll or a survey, 15 to 17% of the population within this environment have mm. had a mental illness All right. or are undergoing a mental illness. And sometimes they don't even know. But because either one, people are not aware of how this person is, so they're suffering in silence. Yeah. Or two, they have controlled the illness. They've gone, they've sought help, they're undergoing treatment, mm. and they're able to put out just as much as anyone else. Okay. So no one would know. Okay. So unless someone actually stands up and say, oh, by the way, I have this condition. You some of your bosses know. might know about someone's illness, or even the bosses know amongst themselves, one of them might have an illness. Yes. And someone knows. But because that person has said no, due to the stigma, let, let it be quiet. Between you and HR, yes. HR knows this person has an issue. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the myth that mental illness is, is incurable, mm -hmm. it's, it's a death sentence, mm. is the same thing as in the 1980s when we're saying HIV is, death, is a mm. death sentence. Mm. But once we demystified it, All we right. talked about it, we brought it out, now people know HIV is a disease. Yes, yes. That's it. That's it. And just the mental illness is a disease. All right. Yeah. And there are solutions to, to, yes. to every disease, yes. most diseases. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Mumbicheke. Thank you for the insights. And of course, for um, especially what you talked about, the uh, Salai tragedy and you know, the need for support um, right now for those families. Thank mm -hmm. you for your time. She is a psychiatrist. We've been talking about a number of things, including just mental health and of course, how to deal with trauma. Thank you for your time. All right, so we want to continue with uh, some stories here. We are about to finish the show, but um, looking at some uh, stories across our borders, and Nigeria's leather industry has the potential to generate over $600 million annually. But after a collapse of the manufacturing sector in the 90s, entrepreneurs are struggling to source materials for their products. Femi Olayebi, founder of Fech Femi Handbags and the annual Leather Flare, Fair rather, is uh, providing a platform for designers and other industry players to showcase their work and discuss the challenges facing the industry. The second edition of the Lagos Leather Fair recently opened in Nigeria's commercial capital, attracting various traders, exhibitors and buyers. The three-day exhibition showcases various leather products from bags, shoes, 
belts, apparel to other fashion accessories. Lagos Leather Fair is the brainchild of Femi Olayebi, a designer based in Ibadan. About 55 exhibitors displayed their products at this year's edition. We're sitting on a gold mine in terms of the leather industry. I think that we have not tapped into the potential that the leather industry can bring to the economy. And I think that there's so much that can be done um, in terms of value addition to bring the leather industry even almost to number, a number two foreign exchange earner for the country. Because out there, the, 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 the leather industry brings in billions and billions of dollars. And I don't see why Nigeria cannot tap into that. The fair also included fashion shows, panel discussions and workshops with over 3,000 guests attending. Until the early 90s, Nigeria's conflict-stricken north was a hub for textiles and leather export firms, which were hit by lack of power, state corruption, and cheap imports from China. There have been some limited Chinese investments in recent years into what is left of Nigeria's leather and textile industry. But most plants have remained closed since throwing in the towel. What I have seen is that, yes, I see a lot of entrepreneurs you know, embracing the leather industry, but I also think that the local patronage is still low right now. Um, out of all the shops or all the stands I've visited, uh, Femi handbags and a few are actually one of those that I can buy their products. Some of them, the stitches are not very good, the detailing is not, you know, is not well done, you know, so perhaps this is one of the reasons why people are not patronizing. Femi sources raw materials for her bags from Europe because processors at home prefer to sell to clients who order in bulk, making it difficult for small customers like her to make products using Nigeria's leather. Depending on the complexity of the design, it takes between 10 to 50 hours to produce a finished handbag. The handbags sell for between $300 to $800. dollars government may have to put a few policies in place um, because as it is now, what happens is we, the smaller designers, do not have access to the leathers that are turned in Nigeria. So we do not have access to our own leathers. And I can't blame the tanneries because, I guess, for economic reasons, they'd prefer to sell to um, the big designers that are ready to pay good foreign exchange for um, hundreds and hundreds of square, square feet of leather, whereas uh, smaller designers like ourselves will probably be needing, requiring nothing more than maybe 20 square meters, 50 square meters. You know, so I think for economic reasons, they, they prefer to sell to, um, to the international markets. In recent years, the central bank has made low interest rate loans available to investors to help stimulate the non-oil sector, including tanneries. It is hoped that eventually this will boost the economy and also enable entrepreneurs like Femi source materials they need at home. Janet Chapia, KTN News. All right, thank you very much for watching New Center this morning. We appreciate your time and, of course, all the tweets that I'm getting on my handle and on our hashtag this morning to do with our tweetable. Remember, we're asking you, should unions now call off the public universities lecturers strike? Quite a number of people, as you can see, 70% there um, saying yes, indeed, it's time, and 30% saying no, the unions should still hold on. All right, thank you for your time. And uh, we appreciate Dalmas, but we're truly just, let me sample one or two before we wind up. Yes, it's time they called off the strike because we students need to continue with our studies. But then it's unfair, it will be unfair for the dons to be ordered back to class without their demands being met. Yet the other day, MPs passed a 700% rise in their pension. Thank you for your comments. We'll, of course, uh, continue to um, uh, interact online. Till then, uh, goodbye. My name is Betty Kelly. See you again tomorrow evening on Friday Briefing. But of course, News Center will be up and running from 9 a.m. tomorrow. Till then, be blessed, be kind to one another. Keep it here. My colleague uh, Nick Wambo is coming in with uh, Leo Mashinani. He's going to continue with all the coverage that uh, we began from early in the morning. All right, goodbye. Keep it KTN News.